Hello, my name is Duncan Loxton from UTS Library, and this is Licensing the Safekeeping of Indigenous Research Data at the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Data Archive. I'd like to start by acknowledging the original custodians of the lands from which tuning in from today. I stand upon the unceded lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. I'm not an Indigenous man. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Data Archive and the new deposit license we use when taking custody of Indigenous research data. Before I begin, I'd like to qualify some of the terminology I'll be using. I use the term data and Indigenous research data as a figure of speech to refer to Indigenous knowledge recorded in the conduct of research, acknowledging it can't represent the totality of Indigenous knowledge systems and life ways. When I speak of Indigenous research data, I'm speaking in the broadest sense about material collected during research that concerns all impacts Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. I use the term Indigenous Peoples, First Nations and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people interchangeably to refer to the First People of Australia. The use of this terminology acknowledges the diversity of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and communities across Australia. ATSEDA is a specialised data management facility that supports the sovereign rights of First Nations people to control the circumstances in which their knowledge is stored, shared and applied. We're a small archive originally established in 2008 and as an adjunct to the Australian Data Archive with a goal to work proactively with researchers and communities to identify, manage and preserve often dispersed Australian Indigenous research data. When I speak of sovereignty and sovereign rights in an archival context, I'm talking about the right of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples to assert ownership of their data and to be involved in decision making about their knowledges and representations. A data archive like ATSEDA can support these rights in several ways, primarily by involving Indigenous rights holders in all stages of data governance. A deposit license agreement sets us up from the start to accept Indigenous research data in such a way that we can legally support this participatory approach. The new ATSEDA deposit license agreement is an agreement between ATSEDA and the data depositor, and it sets out the terms and conditions necessary for data to enter ATSEDA's custody. The license indicates any conditions or protocols that should inform our safekeeping of the data and any future uses of the data. It also specifies the legal rights retained by the depositor and other key stakeholders. These rights include property, Indigenous cultural and intellectual property, or ISIP, intellectual property, and moral rights. When Indigenous research data is deposited to its ETA, we collect this information to ensure that we can sustainably and accountably protect these rights in the data. The ATSEDA Deposit Licence Agreement is a precondition of our ability to provide culturally appropriate and self-determined access to Indigenous research data. This agreement is pretty dense at 12 pages long, so I wanted to call out some highlights. The depositor must show evidence that those involved in the research have given free, prior and informed consent for the deposit, retention and or sharing of the data. This consent must be valid and current at the time of deposit. The depositor must provide the details of those involved in the research so that they may be supported to freely determine when, if, or how data entering into its custody will be managed, accessed, and used. Participant details can only be provided if consent has been obtained. Alternative arrangements for Indigenous data governance can be designated where an individual may not want to be identified or collective rights apply. ISIP and its owners are identified where ISIP is incorporated or referenced in the data. Ownership of ISIP is not transferred to its ETA in the agreement. The agreement is flexible enough to support a range of access and use conditions and can accommodate a variety of management plans and protocols. The depositor can also request to have the data returned and removed from its ETA's custody. These elements enable Indigenous people to exercise ownership of data and have an active involvement in what happens to the data, upholding the right of ownership and control guided all decisions that CEDA made when drafting this agreement. The CEDA license agreement does not take ownership or control from the depositor or Indigenous cultural owners, and at no point does CEDA own the depositor data as property. It is one part of a broader set of procedures and behaviours, guided by our CEDA protocols and CEDA reference group, that help enable Indigenous peoples to control the use of their data and sustainably access their data. Decisions made about data in our custody needs to be Indigenous led. This agreement is available to freely share, reuse or remix, but seek legal advice before using it formally in other contexts. 
I'd like to give thanks to my colleague, Charlotte Moore, who was instrumental in the development of this deposit license. I'd also like to thank my colleagues, Matthew Noble, Belinda Tiffin, and Carly Gould for their input, to Linda Lay and Thomas Allen from IATSIS, to the ATSITA Reference Group, and Annika Valenti from Terry Jenkins and Co. If you'd like to get in touch, please reach out to ATSITA at uts.edu.au. Thank you.